Three men block grandma at ATM, find out they messed with the wrong granny. Three would-be muggers take their chance on a frail old lady. Little do they know, she has different plans for the encounter. Just a pushover. We hear about elderly people being taken advantage of every day. Everything from door-to-door -door salesmen and phone scams and of course thieves, it seems that there are just people with low morals everywhere. While Winifred was on a shopping trip something scary was unfolding around her. She felt a presence behind her and turned to see three menacing figures very close by. Luckily for Winifred, she wasn't just any old lady. A quaint town. Winifred Peel is like many older ladies. She lives in a small town near Liverpool and happily goes about her daily life at a leisurely pace. She's 77 and long since retired from any fast-paced job, she has no reason to ever be rushed or in a hurry. Winifred grew up in this area and felt safe in the comfort of familiar surroundings, but all of that would change in a heartbeat. A piece of cake. On a cold winter morning, Winifred started her day as she had many before. She left her house and walked the distance through town to her most frequented cafe to sit down for a hot cup of tea and a slice of cake. On her way, she glimpsed a group of young men outside the bank having an argument but thought nothing of it. It was just another day, or so it seemed. Energetic and vital. Winifred, in her youth, had spent many hours helping her father around the house, becoming quite skilled at fixed things. She also enjoyed a variety of sports which kept her fit and healthy. She continued these hobbies throughout her life, keeping her mind and body sharp. If the men outside the bank had known anything about Winifred they would not have dared to try what they were thinking. Penniless. After enjoying her mid-morning nibble, Winifred remembered it would soon be her friend's daughter's birthday and decided to do some shopping. There were sales at some of her favorite clothing and accessory stores and she spent some time browsing before selecting her gifts and bringing them to the register. Only then did she realize she had no money with which to pay and, embarrassed left the shop in a rush for the ATM, flustered, she didn't even notice her surroundings. Apprehensive. There were only a handful of banks in the small town and Winifred made use of her sporty past, walking quickly through the quiet streets. She stopped to catch her breath and felt a little apprehensive but couldn't quite figure out why. Dismissing it as low blood sugar, she ignored her innate feeling of unease she continued on. Absorbed. Finally, Winnie was in sight of the machine and groped around in her bag to locate her purse and bank cards. She pushed aside keys and slips of paper, searching the contents of her bag with her hand. She heard footstep coming up behind her and turned to see a young lady standing behind her, waiting for a turn. Please, go ahead. I can't seem to find my cards, Winnie assured her. The lady offered her thanks and was soon finished and carrying on her way. Winnie, frustrated with her seemly inability to locate her bank cards didn't hear the true danger that once again approached from behind. All of a sudden. Now Winifred had always been a trusting woman. She lived by the motto, give kindness. Receive kindness back, and so she continued her daily routines without worrying. She was aware that there were people behind her as she used the machine to withdraw her money because she could see tall shadows reflected on the screen. She began to enter her pin, select the amount she wanted and heard the whirring of the machine as it began to dispense the cash. As soon as the money popped out of the slot in the ATM she began falling to the floor, her vision leaving her. Reaction time. Everything happened so quickly. Winifred found herself lying on the ground, large feet shuffling around her and then the adrenaline kicked in. You are not taking my hard-earned money, she thought in a wave of anger and injustice overcame her launching her to her feet. Winnie was up and flying at them before the men knew what was happening. Counter-strike. The same three men she had seen making a commotion outside the bank early had clearly changed tack, thinking old ladies would be easier targets. They were gravely mistaken. Winnie lunged at her closest assailant, grabbing his head in a vice-like grip and wrestled him against the wall using the full weight of her body. The would-be accomplices wrenched their partner in crime free from her grasp and fled down the road. A realization. Winnie, fueled by the adrenaline coursing through her veins gave chase but stopped short when the implications dawned on her. Only afterward did I realize what I had done and start to shake, she said, what if he'd had a knife? I might not be here today. But even though her senses had returned she couldn't help feeling angry that she had let them get away. Or had she? Lending a helping hand. A few people had heard the commotion and came running over to assist a distressed-looking Winifred. 
wanting nothing but justice she urged them to chase after the men in order to identify them before they made an escape. Puzzle Pieces The police quickly picked up where the good Samaritans left off. They were able to do some detective work, evidence supplied by Winifred herself. During her daring self-defense counter-strike, Winnie had left a lot of damage and clues for the police. Around the ATM machine and on the walls were the not-so-subtle marking of the altercation, with more evidence trailing around the corner. Able-bodied. Winifred had always been an avid gym-goer, as regularly as four times a week and as she grew older she did not forego the habit. Her workouts did not sport the same intensity, but she was still a force to be reckoned with. During the attack, her instincts were to fight and she gave everything she could, her anger, fear, and strength which would ensure justice was found. Dead end. Further up the road, the police apprehended the initial attack to have pushed Winnie to the ground. He was notably marred, with a wound on his head. His two accomplices had nowhere to go and were found hiding nearby. The police cornered the last two and swiftly took all of them in, to be judged for their crimes. Sentences served. As Winnie looks back on this difficult, dark time she remembers feeling shaken but never helpless. She knows now better than ever before that her gym honed body is still strong and capable. The three men confessed quickly to their shameful crime that almost cast a shadow over Winnie's twilight years. The judge disgusted by their lewd action convicted them to serve their sentences out in prison, but is that enough for Winnie?